tries to tell us we all have the Lord in us. We all don't demonstrate it. We all don't act like it. But we, we all got the Lord in us. We were made in his image. Amen. Ushers, we thank you um, for doing what you do and you do it with a smile. If you have your Bible, we'll go back to John chapter 11. And we have been able to uh, to record our morning worship services, our sermons, and they are on um, on YouTube. Um, and and so what we want to do is to to kind of eliminate the extra talking um, because the camera picks up all the extra talking. Um, so we want to make sure that we're good stewards of our time together. Amen. Um, those of you that have that word, John 11, chapter 30. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village. And I want you all to pay attention to every word that, that's read right here because it's all important. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but he was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time of sharing. God, allow these words. To penetrate our hearts and our ears and our spirits and our minds. God, do not allow any distractions or any hindrance or any of my own flaws or shortcomings to hinder the greatness that you have for this word today. And God, we pray that our lives are forever changed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to pick back up on the conversation we started last week from this thought. There will be glory after this. Tell somebody, regardless of what you're going through, there will be glory after this. Last week, we preached once again from that thought, um, from this thought, there will be glory after this. And for those of you that has never uh, heard about this story, let me just kind of rewind and then back up. Can we do that? Um, rewind, back up, then press fast forward. Um, there was a man named Lazarus. Lazarus had a sister named Martha and had another sister named Mary. And they all, all three of them was friends with Jesus. You know, you know, J they called him JC for short. They was homies, they was friends, they was family, they hung out. Uh, uh, but, but one day, Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, the brother of Mary and Martha, uh, got sick. They sent word to Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, the one you love is now sick. Now, Jesus was not yet in this town, but he got word. He got a text. He he, he looked at Facebook and, and, and saw, saw, saw Lazarus' status was updated and saying I was sick. He saw Mary and Martha's Facebook status. They, he saw their tweet saying, our brother is sick. Keep him in your prayers. They, they, they got the letters. He, Jesus got the letters while he was with his boy saying that his homie was sick. And Jesus being who he was, he was a very compassionate type guy. And if he was a friend of Jesus, I'm certainly, I, 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 I simply believe that he would have been concerned about his friend. But Jesus tells, his, tells the disciples, hey, uh, we got to go back down there because there is word that Lazarus is sick. Now, before this occasion, with this same time, 
There were some men there trying to kill Jesus. And I told you last week that, that Jesus being who he is, even in our lives, will allow us to kind of revisit places that should have took us out. Yeah. He, he will allow us to visit people and be in the presence of people that, that have, would have wished to wait, have wished uh, a false hope and, and ooh, doom and gloom on our lives. Jesus will allow us to revisit those places that people said were not, were not favorable for us. So Jesus tells the boys, hey, we got to go right back down there. So these disciples, you know, they concerned like us. Hey, Jesus, uh, didn't they just try to kill you the last time we was in that town? Jesus said, you know what, don't even worry about that. We got to go because my friend is sick. We got to go back to the place because my friend is sick. So now Jesus is on the way. And keep in mind, they were not even far from where Lazarus, Mary, and Martha was. But Jesus took his time. Back then, they believed if three days, if somebody died, either that Monday and Tuesday, if somebody was able to bring them back, they had three days to do it. But that fourth day, they knew you was gone. They knew it won't know this uh, res resuscitation. They knew it won't know voodoo was going to bring you back. They knew if you got to that fourth day and you were not back, you were not going to live. So Jesus, with his cool self, stayed out of the picture until that fourth day. Can I tell you that regardless of what you're going through this morning, Jesus will wait longer than you think, but he'll still be on time just for your situation. Maybe I'm preaching to the wrong church. Jesus will take longer than you expect, but he'll still be on time every single time. He, he, will, take, he will take two days longer in your eyes, but still be on time. He will take ten years uh, uh, longer than you want him, to do, want him to, but he'll still be on time. Jesus is never late for an appointment that he, he's already designed for your life. I don't care how crazy it is. I don't care how devastating it may feel for you. He is never late for something concerning you, even though you may think he is. Amen. So, so here Jesus is. Uh, he, he's take, he has taken his time. And here the fourth day comes. Jesus comes. And I told you last week, he got that Obama swag. He's coming into town. Like, you know what? Uh, let's go see about my friend. Now, he tells he tell his boys, he tells the disciples, hey, we got to go see Lazarus. He's sick. And then he got worried that he died. And Jesus tells the disciples, hey, this sickness is not unto death. He's just sleeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just took too much night quill. Uh -huh. he, 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 he took his stir flu too late. Uh -huh. you, you know, you know, you know you, 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 you're looking at a dead situation out of your eyes, but have you tried to look at the situation out of the eyes of the Lord? And, and that's the issue with some of us this morning. We look at situations out of our own eyes and our, and out of our own perspective and never look at it from the eyes of God. Yes. Tell somebody, change how you're looking at it. Change how you're looking at, change how you looking at the situation because when you change how you look at it, your perspective also changes. Uh -huh. And when your perspective changes, sometimes your location has to change. Not just physically, but mentally. Not just mentally and physically, but emotionally. Yeah, yeah. Because some of us have moved to a new house, but we're still tied emotionally to the same foolishness. Uh -huh. Some of us have switched churches, but we're still tied to the same thing because we have not yet looked at it from the eyes of the Lord. So Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. Hey, hey, he's just sleeping. They, you know, they pretty, you know, they ain't really telling Jesus what they really want to say. Like, man, you really crazy because he's dead. He's dead, dead. <laughs> you know, you know, but Jesus said, you know what? Like, we're going back. We're going back. So, so he's approached coming before he gets to the city, he's approached by one of Lazarus' sisters. And, and and I'm almost certain that she's upset. Because now her family is grieving the loss of a brother. Yeah, yeah. And not just any brother. They're, they're grieving the loss of a brother that was friends with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so one sister come and say, you know what? Had you been here, our brother would not have died. Yeah. Jesus didn't say much. Mm. The text tells us in verse 30 that even before he can get into the town, he's approached. And I want to let you know that sometimes in life, 
you can't just always wait for Jesus to come see you. You got to go see him. So, sometimes in life, you can't wait till Sunday morning and say, well, if I get to church, I feel all right. No, 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 no. Sometimes in life, the situations are the way they are. You got to go say, Jesus, whatever I got to do to be in your presence, I'll do it. Whoever I got to leave in the house, whoever I got to leave in the job, whoever I got to leave uh, standing beside, I got to get in your presence because there is something that I'm dealing with that's bigger than myself. There's something that I'm dealing with that's bigger than myself, and I cannot contain it. Can you imagine losing a loved one, and you friends with with the, with, with the heart doctor, and your your loved one uh, dies of heart heart uh, heart failure, and you best friends with the heart doctor, mm -hmm. and your and, and, and you know that your friend is the best heart, heart doctor in town, and then he don't come see about your loved one. You 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 telling me you still want to sit down and call him a friend? You you mean to tell me that your best friend is a firefighter and your loved one ain't got burned up in the house because your best friend was taking that time to get to the house? You still want to come over for Thanksgiving dinner? Oh no 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 don't even don't even come on my street. I can imagine I can I can imagine the the sister Lazarus being upset with Jesus. Now, now, maybe you wouldn't be mad with Jesus, but I would be mad with Jesus. I wouldn't even want to sin. All right. No, I'm serious. I would not even want to sin because I'm thinking now, you stayed out of my situation. You knew my brother was sick. Yes. You knew my mother was sick. You knew my child was sick. You knew my loved one was sick. You knew I didn't have no job. You knew we didn't have enough resources. Yeah, now I'm mad, Jesus. Now I'm mad. And if some of us are really be transparent today, some of us are mad with God even today. Yes. We're mad because life has not panned out the way we thought it would. We read the stories uh, about everybody dreaming it, and we knew when we was a child, this is what I want to do, this is where I want to go, this is what I want to accomplish. But somewhere in life, something inside of you begin to die. Yes. Your dreams begin to die. Your confidence begin to die. The faith that you had in God begin to die because life around you begin to die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It started dying around you and you could not control it. So now you're in a situation where you're mad with God. And we don't talk about it often. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about it often. We don't talk about how mad we really are with God because our heart got broke. Because we were embarrassed, because somebody somebody hurt our feelings. We don't really talk about that because you know we 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 got it together. But I told you I remember when when Elise got sick and started having seizures out the blue. I was mad with God. I didn't understand why why she had never been sick and all of a sudden, which after she turned eight, she got sick, started having seizures. I was going to church every Sunday, every Thursday, directing four or five choirs, working with the mayor in my town. I was doing everything I thought I was supposed to do. And now she's sick. Doctors can't even under, understand where the seizures are coming from. Sitting up in Duke, inside of a hospital room, big, uh, smaller than this pulpit area, I was mad. And so, when you really think about your own lives, there are some situations where you've been mad with God. Yes. Why my child? Why my parents? Why, 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 did, why is this my life? But I simply came to tell you there will be glory Amen. after this. Amen. Yes. There, there will be glory after this. So, so in this story now, now we pick up today. Where the sister is crying at the house. And she, hear, she hears that, that Jesus was on his way in. Jesus was on his way in. And so she went and met him. And said the folk that was, at, that was at the house crying left out of the house because they said, I know she's going to the tomb. I know she's going to cry over her brother. I know where she's going, so let's go. Can I tell you, sometimes you got people around you, instead of encouraging you, they'll allow you to have your pity party right there. Yes. Yes. 
The text never tells us that the sister had people around her praying and, and praising God, even in the midst of it. Sometimes in life, you got the wrong folk around you allowing you to have your pity party. In order for you to understand that God will get the glory out of your situation, you got to be careful who's crying around you when you cry. Because you, you, ever, you ever had that girlfriend where, where you got your heart broken, you've been crying for three days, and you call her, now she's crying, now it's another three days, so that's six days, then y'all call another friend, that's a whole other three days, and look at it, and that's a whole other month, everybody crying, nobody ain't went to work, everybody's sick, everybody laying in the bed, nobody ain't took no shower, ain't nobody put no makeup on, and we all depressed. And don't let me talk about the brothers because we ain't got no platform to really cry. So when we get upset, we just shut down. We don't even cut the lights on. We, we under the cuff. Wow. Wow. Stinking. And you left out the room. We know we starving, but we don't eat. That's what men don't take when we get depressed. We don't take that because we're too masculine. We, we don't share them stories. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you really talk to a real man, they would tell you that there's a times in my life where I was so depressed, I didn't want to see nobody, I didn't want to talk to nobody, don't call my phone, don't come to my house, but it, uh, sometimes it only happens when we get our heart broke by a woman we love. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm not about to hear, not to hear. <laughs> he said, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, men will never tell you that we cry when our heart broke.
for us to be the head and not the tail, but you have to show him what you're working with. You have to show him what you're working with. You remember down in verse 34, he tells the sister, he says, show me where you laid he, he tells, he says, show me where you laid it. You got your finger on it? He simply said, show me where you laid it. And this morning, that's all I really came by here to tell you. In order for God to get the glory out of your life, mm -hmm. you got to show him where you laid your dreams. Yeah. You got to show him where you laid the book that you started years ago. Yeah. You got to show him where you laid that business plan that you had. Uh -huh. You got to show him where you laid that you wanted to go to college and, and for whatever reason you've never been there. You, you got to show him where you laid your stuff. Yes, yes. Because they, they knew exactly where they laid Lazarus. Uh -huh. Jesus knew where they laid Lazarus. Yeah. But Jesus is so concerned about you and I. He, he said, come take my hand and show exactly where it was that you laid him. Some of us, some of us have been so frustrated with life. We don't even know where we put the last thing God told us to do. We don't even know where we put it in. Yes. The last time you really felt like worshiping him, where did you leave it? Mm. The last time you really felt like hearing from the Lord, where did you lay that desire? Your desire to work in the kingdom, the, the desire to see people saved. Where, where did you lay that desire? Mm -hmm. So, he said, Mary, where Nothing. did you lay it? Nothing. And I'll ask you this morning, once again, where did you lay the thing down that you love? Where did you lay your passion? Where did you lay your gift? Where did you lay your ministry? Where did you lay that assignment that God has a danger on hand to do? Where did you lay it? it? And sometimes in life we've gotten so deep in bullshit. Uh, yeah. We make so many excuses for not to work for God. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But here Mary and Martha was. Crying over a dead brother, but still had sense enough to tell Jesus where they laid him. Mm -hmm. And I like this story because when we look around in our church today, we all can relate to losing something that we love. Yes, yes. We all can, can relate to feeling like life has given us everything but good stuff. And we all can look at this story and find something in here that, that can relate to our own lives. But some of us want God to do everything without us doing anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen. We want God to, to come down off the throne. We want him to come down into our home. We want him to clean our house up. We want him to wash the dishes. We want him to walk the dog. We want him to go to work for us. We want him to write the check and cash the check and pay our bills and, and do all the things that we won't do. Mm -hmm. There was a man by the name of Joe. Joe was a singer. A couple years ago, Joe came out with a song and said, I'll do all the things that your man won't do. You know, I, I know, you know, y'all been saying, y'all been listening to Shirley C's all your life. <laughs> But, 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 but Joe said, I'll do all the things that your man won't do. And, and in life, we want Jesus to do all the things that we won't even do. We want him to forgive us, but we won't forgive nobody. We want him to bless us, but we won't bless nobody. We want him to do all this stuff, and he can't even give us, get, get us to commit to do one thing. You, you remember when he told the boys, he said, he said, can y'all just pray for me? And then they end up going to sleep. He said, can y'all not pray at least one hour? And, and, and that's where some of us are. We so lazy. 
uh, 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 God can't depend on us to do nothing. And he said, look here, I, I, want, you to, I, I want you to do it. I, I, I want you to be committed to me. I want you to be committed to the ministry. I, I want you to work out. I, I give you everything you need. Uh, only thing I want you to do is just show me where you lead. I'll make the crooked way straight, but just, just show me where you lead. Show me, show, show me where it went wrong. And he already knows it, but, but he wants us to be honest. He wants us to be transparent. He wants us to say, you know what, God, it hurt me when. He, he wants us to say, God, you know what, I got really upset when. God, I, 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 I try to do the best uh, uh, about my life, about my children, about my family, about my job. And, and God, it don't seem like ends are being bad. I, I'm upset right now. He, he wants to know that. God, I go to school every day, and, and it seems like the more I go to school, the more folk pick on me, the more, the more I'm mad, the more I feel like I can't really talk, the more I feel like people are picking on me, the more I feel like I'm isolated. And God said, just tell me, just tell me, just tell me. I, I already know, but I need to hear from you. God, my body was good, and, and all of a sudden, God, I, I got a hand nail, then my finger got swollen up, then my hand got broke, then, then my wrist stopped working, then my arm got swollen, then, then my chest started hurting, then, then my legs swollen. He, he, he knows, but he wants to hear from you. And some of us, I, God, God knows, I believe when we start being more transparent with the Lord, we'll see God's blessings follow us. Amen. When we really just start being transparent with the Lord and say, Lord, you know, I'm really hurting. And some of us would never move past the hurt because we won't be real with God. So he's telling them, he said, hey, show me what you laid. Mm -hmm. And once we show God where we laid that thing that we know that he told us to do, he can show us his power. And that is when his glory shows up. But his glory would never show up to folk that's ungrateful. His glory, and, and question, why should it show up for ungrateful folk like us? Why should God's glory show up for us that, 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 that wrestle with the assignments that he has put on our desk? Talk to Elisa. And sometimes her grades are not good, not because, not because she she don't, sometimes she don't understand the work, but when she understands the work, she don't turn the assignments in. How many times in our lives have we not turned the assignments in that God has told us to do? Think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it. That's right, think about it, that's right, think about it. And, 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 and once again, once again, once again. God will speak to children just to make sure we're hearing. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I, I believe everything happens in church for a reason. Yes. And sometimes we don't understand the reason, but it happens. Mm -hmm. All of us in here have an assignment that God has signed your name to do. And you're going to get a grade for that assignment one day. You're going to get a grade, you're going to get a grade for that assignment. You're going to get a grade for that assignment. If you don't turn it in, he can't grade. And unfortunately, some of us are failing this class when it comes to ministry. Not because we're not showing up. We just won't do no work. We show up to class every, every, every day. I tell I said, you, you go to class every day. There's no, there's no reason why your grades aren't good. And some of us show up to class every Sunday and never turn no assignments in. We come to Bible study, we get it, we got to never turn, never turn no assignments in. So now, can you imagine? They're standing at this tomb. A dead man is in the tomb. Jesus had just come to the tomb. And then he tells some people that's out there, he said, hey, move, move that stone away. Move, move, move that, move that rock out of the way. Then if you read down in the text, Jesus heard someone say, he heard someone say, 
But by now, he stinks. He's been there. He's been dead for days. He stinks. Don't you know we all stink? Our sin stinks in the nostrils of the Lord. But even though he was stinking to the people, 